So it's been a while since I've talked about elephant money. And so today we're gonna to talk about elephant money. So let's get into the juicy, juicy details. So uh, one thing I know that and this is just uh, me browsing the YouTubes, but if the latest on elephant money is my video from three months ago, um, saying that it's failed, uh, that means no one's talking about elephant money, which means that no money's coming in, which means that uh, it's, just, I mean, people are just saying it's gonna collapse. And I, I was the first um, when everyone was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. But besides that, let's get into Hack Laddie, their article. Um, I actually just saw this come up on my Medium and I didn't know anything about the Venus turbines because, well, I haven't been in, uh, watching elephant money and that, i'm not in elephant money whatsoever but um i always see hack laddie on uh coin market cap and they always have a great value uh, and they have the kind of the same um i guess not thought process but they have the same kind of um mentality of how ponzi's and a lot of these crypto projects prey on uneducated or people that just don't understand basic economics or how money actually works. So um, pretty much the summary of this article is that the lending platform Venus isn't going to really do much. Um, the only way it's going to do something is if they use the money to actually get a higher APY than what the protocol is offering. So like they talk, Hack Laddie talks about how the protocol only gives 0.06 APY, which is literally nothing. And so if you are going from a 49.7 to a 49.51, that's literally nothing. And it's not gonna make up for the outflows and the liabilities of futures within elephant money. And so if we look at um, what she's, what he or she says, it says there's too much liabilities, there's too much uh, money that's going out. And if you just look at the chart, I mean, I called this, I think right about, right about here, I think it was around four. And I said, this is the end guys, it's done. Um, get your money out and for the last, I don't know, six months, three months, four months, it's been uh, down 50%, over 50%. So, um, and just in the last month, 21%. So it's funny to see the, pe the same people who will say like, just wait, you don't know what you're talking about. But again, I'm right, again. And I, I don't know why you guys just don't subscribe to me and learn a few things on how money works or how to invest or uh, obviously I'm not a financial advisor, but I know a good amount of, of things and um, I, I don't know. Anyways, um, let's just say that elephant money is done. Uh, we, all, we all know this. Um, what they're doing is the same Ponzi slash kind of thing drifted and all the other uh, ROI dApps that failed. And so this is gonna go continuously drop. There's not enough money coming in. Um, this is fake, obviously. Um, well, this is just sales actually. So um, people taking profits, but uh, yeah, like there's really nothing that's going to keep this going. And people are gonna keep cashing out because they wanna go and buy Bitcoin or Ethereum and actual crypto projects that are actually doing something versus elephant money, which is just another Ponzi scam that um, you know is meant to enrich bank teller, uh, who I, you know, and I had, has anyone checked to see if bank teller is who he says he is? Is he the uh, MIT, uh, banker that is you know changing wall street and doing all the things that he claimed he that he did or when i did a little bit of research i can find anything about him um because you know it's easy you can literally just go on linkedin and say you've gone anywhere but um and i'm the ceo of you know uh Apple, like I could write that on LinkedIn and I would be the CEO of LinkedIn or of uh, Apple if I, if I just decided to write that. 
Um, and you can too, just like uh, Nate Teller probably said that he was this uh, MIT uh, banking professional who you know was working for Fidelity and you know doing all these things, which uh, it's not as smart as he thought he was, um, because um, it's only but failed. Um, and I, I mean, if you guys would have listened to me the first time, and all the people that like was like, hey, you should check out this. I knew I was already too late because all these Ponzi's are the same. Uh, I've once you've seen one, well, I would say once you've seen a couple, you kind of understand the the concepts of how they play out. Um, especially with like all the new little things that they do, like. Uh, uh, keeping the price uh, pegged to a certain price, uh, you know, all these little things, mechanics that they do to try and trick um, investors into thinking it's this uh, money printing machine and this infinite money uh, machine will keep paying you guys no matter if no one invests. And that's not true. And not only that, but uh, just like Hack Laddie said, that if you understand that external money needs to come in, to have it sustainable where all of your liabilities are not your holders um, or like your holder shouldn't be your only your liabilities. Like you should have outside capital coming in that wash away your liabilities, but they don't do that because they're um, not intelligent at all. So, um, but here, I think this is where, where, where's a Ponzi? So the reason, Let's find the actual thing here. No, here, right here. And this is our my exact thought process too. If the primary source of yield is the existing investors, then you are the yield. And the project operates as a Ponzi. If the primary source of yield is external, the yield from providing a service or investing through a project that does so, that makes it likely a legitimate investment. And so that's what I've always done. I mean, that's why, uh, I buy houses, I buy cars, and those cars are bringing me the asset and providing the service, or bringing me the cash flow and providing the service, and uh, the car doesn't print more cars. Um, it's just basic fucking like, economics. But um, anyways, we're almost uh, at eight minutes here, so I uh, just wanted to go on my little rant and just um, I guess do another video because I haven't done any videos probably for a few weeks because I've been just uh, doing other things and uh, enjoying time with my daughter. Um, boom. Um, and uh, life is great, actually. I actually am slowly pulling out of crypto, too. So that's probably why I haven't done a lot of videos on crypto because now that the market's going bananas, it's time to cash out and um, uh, not be dumped on like uh, happened. I mean, I didn't get, I won the last bull market. And so I'm gonna win this bull market too. And that's just how you win. So um, I'll, pr I'll probably wait until, I mean, I'm gonna start cashing out now because we're at all time highs, but uh, slowly cashing out and uh, probably get it up to around 80 or 100 and then uh, just be fully uh, out. And then there'll be a huge crash and then I'll buy in again and hold long term and use it as a asset to borrow against uh just like real estate just like businesses just like stocks you know it's just another asset class you're able to borrow against so that's it uh like subscribe if you want or don't i really don't care i do this for documenting my own journey and sometimes laughing at all of you uh when you come to my channel and try and shit on it for being right so that's it peace